Next, <laughs> let's queer up health. Madonna's Emotional World AIDS Day concert and first days in New York living with the gay community. Madonna has been an icon in the LGBTQ plus community since the 1980s. And this week she proved why she really th what she really thinks about the gay community as she stopped her world tour concert in Amsterdam to make very personal remarks about the gay community and the importance of World AIDS Day. She repeats over and over, did you know that? We tribute to our community and all that has been lost to AIDS. So we remember using Madonna's emotional challenge. To perform each evening with my children who mean everything to me. Today is World AIDS Day. Do you know that? Is that important to anybody? Maybe it seems like it's so far away that it doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't. It's just another holiday. But let me explain something to you. There is no cure for AIDS. People still die of AIDS. Did you know that? Yes. Just five people said yes. When I first came to New York, I was lucky enough to eventually meet and become friends with so many amazing artists, musicians, painters, singers, dancers, the list goes on and on, writers. And then one day people started getting sick and nobody could understand what was happening. People were just starting to lose weight. People were dropping like flies. They were going to the hospital. Nobody understood what was happening. The news started calling it the gay cancer because it was predominantly in the gay community, which was a terrible shame because I don't know if you understand this right now, but in the early 80s, it was not cool to be gay. It was not accepted to be gay. Did you know that? Or do you just take it for granted right now? So to be able to stand up and say, I am a homosexual, was a very brave action. A very brave and courageous thing to say and do. Right, but the point isn't really about that. Can you imagine what it was like in that time when being gay was considered sinful and disgusting? When suddenly the vast majority of the gay community started dropping like flies and people were dying everywhere? When I say they were dying everywhere, I'm not exaggerating. Every day I would wake up and find a new, hear a new story, a new friend. I'd be visiting someone new. I'd be sitting by their bedside watching them die. Hundreds and hundreds. Meanwhile, nobody in the medical community wanted to do anything about it because they said, well, fuck it, they're faggots. They, sh they deserve to die. Yeah, that's what they said. It was a pretty devastating, scary time. And I personally lost so many friends, so many loved ones. I would have cut off my arms if I could have found a cure for them to live. I watched so many people die, male and female, children, straight, gay, etc. Because in those days, people didn't test blood in the hospital for blood transfusions. So children were also ostracized if they had HIV. I don't know if you know that. In any case, 
it was a devastating time and for me it was like a whole generation was wiped out and I watched my very best friend Martin die I was holding his hand he was suffering so much he could barely breathe he wanted me to play Maria Callas he said play Costa Diva and I did and I said please Martin let go and I watched his spirit leave his body and I don't know if you know this but during Live to Tell he is the first face that appears and then there were so many others afterwards I'm not saying this because I want you to feel sorry for me I want you to recognize how lucky you are right now to be alive That was a lot. That is so much. And it reminds us why for 40 plus years and counting, Madonna has been a fierce ally to our community. She, I mean, anybody who gets in her way over the decades has, has gotten what's theirs. But the fact that she continued, she stood up for us when we co literally couldn't stand for ourselves. She stood up for us through decades and fights and uh, HIV in the 90s and marriage equality fights. She's been there and she's gotten, she's drawn a lot of um, negativity around the last few years for various reasons. Um, some superficial, some perhaps more substantial, but nothing is more substantial than the fact that she loves us. She loves us. Yeah. She comes to us, she holds our hands, um, you know, uh, she's just a lot. And she talked about her best friend who passed away. Also, if you're old enough to have seen, remember and have seen the Truth or Dare uh, concert documentary that they made, yeah. one of the dancers, Gabriel Troopin, mm -hmm. uh, passed away of AIDS uh, when he was only 26. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and, I, and I wanted to say that. And she kept saying, did you know that? And, and it's almost like personal reflection. Like, like, oh my God, did you know that? Like, did I know that? Did I remember that? She comes in and from my reading of her there is that she can't believe it. When she's asked us, did you know that? It's not only are we keeping ourselves up on our, on our LGBTQ history, it's that, oh my God, it's not, did you know that? It's, it's almost like, can you believe that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so thank you, Madonna. Thank you so much yeah. for this speech and 40 plus years of love and friendship. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I saw all the people, all the pictures, pictures of the people that passed away. And I remember like each one, like yeah. when they died and we stand on so many shoulders. We really do. Those were the horror days. And, and, you know, I lived through that and I know we all did. And I just, um, I just, I think what happened is thank God we got the medicines that now you can have it and it can be a chronic thing where, you know, as long as you take your medicine for the most part, you can live. But back then it was a death sentence mm -hmm. for, I would say probably 90% of the mm -hmm. people that got it. And, um, this new generation that didn't see that, I think a lot of people just take it for granted. But anytime I have the opportunity to, to like remind people, like, listen, we had a while to get here. We stand on so many of those people that died because they took medication. The medical community was experimenting, trying to figure out things. Those people died taking these, these medicines that maybe weren't the greatest mm -hmm. and was hurting them more than helping them and that sort of thing. Um, I think of Ronald Eric Allen, my dear friend. He was a beautiful dancer, died at 21 years old and he had his whole future ahead of him at the funeral. I sat there thinking I was so old and I had lived so much life and now all these years later I mean all the life that I've lived and he missed out on it mm. so it's just um it's 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 just I don't take it for granted I really don't and you just saw people just dropping like flies 
<laughs> and it's like they'd be okay one day and then two months later you'd see them and they'd have the look that look because it was mm. like this look that they would get and it was just like oh my god they have it oh my god they have it you know and i just knew i was gonna die from it because see you know they labeled it as the gay disease mm -hmm. and I, at that time i was identifying as a gay a feminine gay male and i just said well it's gonna happen to me because mm -hmm. it's happening to so mm -hmm. many around me you know it's bound to happen Inevitable. Mm -hmm. i think that her timing is also very important because we've gotten to a place where there's yeah. a sense of complacency mm -hmm. and i was told yesterday of someone who's 30 years old that died of aids this week or last week, mm -hmm. because he stopped taking his medication. So yes, you can live a healthy life with HIV, but what if you stop taking your pills? Then you're going to die of AIDS, and you're going to have wasting, and you're going to get CMV, and you're going to have Carparsi sarcoma and things that people don't even think about. Mm -hmm. I remember several years ago on the ride, um, for Smart Ride, at the closing, there's... I define like two different groups of people. Those who are over 30 know someone who's died of AIDS. Mm -hmm. Someone under 30 doesn't. And right. we did this thing like if I say AZT, half the room thinks it's a fraternity. For those of us over 30, it was a drug that extended your life, but it wasn't a better life, no. nor a life necessarily worth living. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the quilt, you know, half the room thinks of a grandma sitting on, on, a, on a front porch knitting where those over 30 know that the quilt is actually the size of a standard coffin because that was the way that you can memorialize and put it out there and people would do make these quilts which represented their friends that were lost a lot of which couldn't be buried in public mm -hmm. because they had aids and they didn't want them in in certain cemeteries and stuff so th there's a lot that there that has to be passed forward Mm -hmm. um, and it has to be taught because people have forgotten. I mean, think as a part of our own makeup, we put up our own defenses. I like it's seeing the pictures that we just witnessed, they take you back. You know, my mind doesn't let me remember all that ugly, mm -hmm. all that sadness, all those people sitting in a hospital bed with someone holding their hand and they can't even move. Um, you know, I, it's, it's, it, I think her words there are important and they're timely. Um, you know that hospital room picture was very famous the yes the yeah. family was saying i really do hope that as many people as possible do see this video because it's really powerful and it's meaningful and it's especially essential viewing for the gay community here in south florida where south beach is now an hiv hotspot with new infection rates being more than four times the national average. Right. Florida still remains number one yeah. in the nation, and yeah. Broward and Dade so, counties are the two toppest, two top areas right. within the nation where new cases of infection it's are. It's so rising. important to remember this. Yeah. Yep. You know, hearing Madonna say those words, did you know that? I think um, even for her audience members, again, if you're at a Madonna concert, you have a certain level of expendable finances to be able to buy a ticket. Yep. Um, you, she is probably her most popular, you know, uh, group of people are white gay men, not, not just gay people, but probably white gay men. And this is a disease that is no longer affecting white people. Right. And it is the privilege of hearing people in the audience that I'm, that there was not silence was, was actually a, a repulsive to me that people were, you know, again, commenting or talking over or whatever they were doing um, was 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 rather disgusting. It was embarrassing to be to imagine myself and disrespectful. But this is a disease that is, um, you know, it is great to have meds if you can have access to them. Um, it's great if you have access to health care. It's a privilege. We in this in this community and, and it's sad that we have such high rates of infection and people contracting it when we have access, even, you know, free access to 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 things because there's millions of people across the world that have zero access. There isn't a clinic. There isn't a an AHF or there isn't a an organization to help you get tested, treated, you know, preventing and. I think her words are really important to remind people about the privilege that we have for healthcare. Absolutely. And and to touch on what you said, a lot of people and Glenn as a Smart Ride founder, you know this that there that you mentioned the complacency. Mm -hmm. Um and but there's a complacency because we're in America. There are currently about 35 million HIV AIDS cases worldwide. 30 4 million, 25 million of them are in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. So AIDS, HIV AIDS is under control 
in America, mm -hmm. but not in sub-Saharan Africa. Another 10% are in South Asia, and that's not counting China. Mm -hmm. So yes, while we, and, and it's terrible that someone didn't take their meds, and, and the mental health aspect of living with HIV AIDS is a completely different story. And I'm, and I'm sad that some people don't avail themselves. But the fact is, this is still a global crisis. If this, we're talking about World AIDS Day, mm -hmm. and we've got a handle on it, it's still painful. It's still painful here, and it's still painful to, to, to have to be able to, it's a privilege to walk with our friends who are positive, but it's also painful to watch them go through it. But the fact is, this is a global disease. It is not getting better in many places because they don't have access. And Madonna speaking up like this, and she was in Europe, she was in yeah, Amsterdam. Was in so Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, that helps. She's our Princess Di. Yes, she is. You know, Princess Di <laughs> yeah. was going out there and just hugging an AIDS patient. And that was earth shattering mm -hmm. in the moment. And Madonna, did, I won't say she picked up the mantle because she was carrying it with Princess Di um, and, and Lady Diana uh, uh, in the 80s and early 90s as well. But she's our Princess Di. I just, I just gotta say one last thing. Yes. Um, people don't talk about you equals you. See, I think if people were more educated, because once you're on your meds and you're undetectable, you are non-transmittable. Mm -hmm. And so that needs to be blasted all over the world. Mm -hmm. And these countries need to get on board with helping their citizens that are HIV positive, because if you get, if they get on medicine, they won't spread right. it. Mm -hmm. But first off, it's completely avoidable. You don't have to get HIV. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is it's not okay to get it and just go on living mm -hmm. on these meds because no one knows what's going to happen in 35 yeah. years. You don't know what it's going to do to your liver, your mm -hmm. heart or anything mm -hmm. else. No one's been on those drugs that long. I've been on them for 30 years at this point, mm -hmm. And I can tell you that like they have repercussions. You know, there's other things that happen because you've been taking these meds for so long and you do get to a point where you have, um, you, it, well, I can't think of the right word right now, but it's no, like we just like, you just can't take the pills. The fatigue. It's pill. Thank you. That's the word. Oh, it's pill fatigue. Mm -hmm. When you take 13 pills at night, you know, you're mm -hmm. at some point you go, I just can't swallow those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I can see how like this, this guy that died, like he didn't tell his partner. He didn't tell anybody, you know, he just quietly stopped taking him and his doctors knew that he was getting sick, but he did nothing about it. And you can't change that. But we also, to the point of it's a worldwide global problem but in in where we're seeing the gr the greatest number yes as white privileged or you know well to do middle middle class we have access and we have knowledge but we live in a state where you're not allowed to say gay mm -hmm. where you don't get sex education in schools so when people are coming of age and they're out there exploring no one has told them so you can't always blame them for doing something stupid because it wasn't stupid they were not educated because our state won't allow it to be educated and then if you're disproportionately affected because of economics. If you're Latino or black, you're at a higher risk. If you're a trans woman, you're at an even higher risk. Mm. So these are all people in groups that are maybe thrown out from their home because they're gay and their father doesn't want a faggot. So he beats them up and then they're homeless. And how do you, how do you survive? You become a sex worker. Mm -hmm. And you've not been educated. And so by the time you're, you're picked up by a Pride Lines or a SunServe or any of these organizations, you may already be positive mm -hmm. and you may not have even known, yeah. you know, so. You know, if you are in South Florida, if you are coming to South Florida, we are home to the World AIDS Museum. And a few moments ago, Glenn was touching on uh, AZT, which was like the early medication that, that it kept you going. And if, and if you were able to keep going long enough, you got the next generation of meds. But at the World AIDS Museum, you couldn't even get AZT particularly easy. You had to have a special prescription pad and your doctor had to be educated on this particular drug. And there they have a prescription pad from the early, from the mid to wow. late eighties when AZT was coming on the scene. Um, it's an artifact, it's a relic, um, but it is a way to uh, physically see, touch and start, start to wrap your head around what it was. It's, it's, it's a totem, it is linked to the past, and the people at World AIDS Museum do a great job. So go there, it's not a large space. You can be in and out in an hour, but what you'll learn and what you'll be able to share is important. And I hope that going forward, we're able to have more fierce allies like Madonna, because she knows the game's not over.